What are your expectations? It's interesting that despite all the prophecies that Israel had, despite all the scholarship they have with some of the greatest scholars of Israel, and, and we, we know the scriptures, Isaiah, that for a child will be born to us, Isaiah chapter 9. A son will be given to us. The government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Eternal Father, the Prince of Peace, and of his reign and his dominion. There will be no end. They had the prophecies. They had the prophecies of, of Isaiah 52, 53, of, the, of the, the king who would be crucified, that his blood would be shed. He'd be crucified. Despite all of that, you can go right back to the fall, actually, right back to the garden, that there's going to be the seed that's going to come that's going to crush the head of the serpent. It's going to crush the head of the lie. Right throughout Scripture, there are prophecies and prophecies. But what happened when the Messiah arrived after three years of ministry? Did the expectations of Israel and their greatest scholars line up with, with their expectations, lining up with the prophecies? What's the answer? No. They were expecting something else. They were expecting a, the king, the Messiah, the coming Messiah to look different. They were expecting him to act differently, to behave differently. They were expecting it to end differently. Even Jesus' closest disciples were confused after the crucifixion and the death of Christ before they encountered the resurrected one. They were expecting, as if you were here at Easter, you'll know they were expecting Judah the hammer, Judas the hammer, the one who came and overthrew Greek rule. They were expecting the one who would come and overthrow Roman rule. They were expecting a Jesus who would come and swing the hammer and swing the sword and, and slay the Roman, uh, le the, the, the Roman leadership and bring back power to Israel, bring back authority to Israel. Uh, a king would be on the throne. Israel would be made great again. That's what they were expecting. Mm -hmm. Instead, they get a Messiah born in a stable. And the kindness of God is revealed that changes everything. And it's those expectations, those, those expectations that didn't come to pass, what they were anticipating, it didn't happen the way they expected, actually caused many, probably of that same crowd who were standing as Jesus came in on that Palm Sunday. They're waving their palm fronts. Many of that same crowd are in the crowd saying, crucify him. Crucify him. Unmet expectations. Shaped by entrenched religious expectations, cultural expectations. What do you do when your expectations fall short? When Jesus doesn't come the way you expect? When prayers aren't answered the way you expect? How do you feel? How do you respond? I've discovered that today there's very little difference between Israel and the way we behave today because we've got expectations. People are wanting to enforce the way of the kingdom. They're wanting power. They're wanting authority. They're wanting to legislate the ways of the kingdom. They're looking for an easy way out. People are still looking for a soul to do their bidding still looking for a king to do their bidding, still looking for a president or a prime minister or some leader who'll do their bidding for them. How did that end up with Saul? <laughs> what did Samuel say? Because you've chosen Saul as king, because you've wanted a king like the rest of the world to do your bidding, you've rejected me. So what do you anticipate, even as we talk about anticipation over this Advent season? What do you expect with Jesus? What do you expect with the journey of our faith? You see, Jesus could have come as an emperor, as a king, with legions of angels and instantly wiped Rome off the map. He could have come that way, but he didn't. He came as a ba baby born in a feeding trough in a stable. No one expected that. Despite the prophecies, Jesus could have been born into a well-to-do aristocratic family. An influential family, but instead he's born into a poor refugee family. No one expected that. Angels could have come to announce the birth of Jesus to, to kings and to Roman legionnaires and to generals in the Roman armies and the, and the nations of the world. But he announced it to shepherds in a field. No one expected that. 
What do you expect? And then, of course, unexpected to the nth degree, the Messiah dies on a cross with a cruel crucifixion with a crown of thorns on his head. How's that a win? That's what they were thinking. How's that a win? We're still poor. We're still under Roman rule. How is that a win? See, Jesus doesn't come into our world or into our circumstances often the way we expect. People are looking for success. People are looking for a win. People are looking for a victory, but on their terms, the way they see it, the way they want it to be, the way they would do it. Jesus often comes with a completely different perspective. 